it is an honor and a privilege to be here today. And I sincerely, it was an absolute pleasure meeting you in Fiji. That was one of the most uh, fun times in my life, working with Tony Robbins, the group, the organization, and just looking at how we change our own life and wealth mastery. So thank you very much. And I'm honored that you were, uh, reached out and we were able to connect today. I wanna to talk about happiness. And I've been spending a lot of time with happiness, and it's funny that Sanjeev had, had mentioned that as part of his talk, uh, because I believe that the key to happiness is gratitude, and I've spent a lot of time focusing on gratitude. And this is actually ancient wisdom, right? That, that Cicero says that gratitude is not only the greatest of all virtues, but the, I'm sorry, gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but it's the parent of all others. And so my focus has been, okay, so I understand how to be grateful for the things I love in my life, you know, my wife, my kids, my uh, career opportunities, things of that nature. But how do I be grateful for it all? And that's been the struggle that I've been thinking about and what I want to share with you today. Because what I realized was if I truly want to unlock happiness in my life, I get to be grateful for everything, not just the things I like. And so I'm going to share with you the most challenging story that I have. Uh, it's one that allows me to really talk about the outer boundaries of gratitude and how to actually be grateful for it all. And what happened was about eight years ago, I was with my family. We were in Bend, Oregon, and we went to a, 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 a buffet for a, it was a lunch, a brunch uh, for Christmas. And it was three days before the holidays. And when we were about to enter the restaurant, my brother-in-law asked me if I would speak to his son, my nephew, about dating. And I said, sure, absolutely, one of my favorite topics. And as we got to the restaurant, I sat down next to him and I started like tunnel vision, focusing on that conversation. So I was really surprised when my brother-in-law jumped up and said, I think that's Ryan. Now, Ryan's my youngest son. At the time, he was seven years old. And I was like, what? And I was just sort of out of context because I'd been talking with him about dating and suddenly my son, what's going on? And he runs up the stairs. And so I follow him and I say, excuse myself, my nephew, and I follow him upstairs. And when I looked across the way, what I saw was my seven-year-old's lifeless body on the ground. As a parent, there is nothing more traumatic than a scene like that. I didn't know what happened. I hadn't heard anything. And all I could see was my son not okay. And so I ran up to him and I said, Ryan, are you okay? Ryan, nothing. I picked up his lifeless body. And in that moment, I went to lean down to hear if he was breathing. And immediately, ah, he starts yelling. His eyes are rolled back. And the first thing was, oh, thank God he's not dead. I didn't know what happened, but at least he's alive. He kept screaming and he kept screaming, Ryan, are you okay? What happened, Ryan? What's going on? Where are you? What's happening, Ryan? Nothing. And immediately I snapped into attention and I thought, you know what? I got to do something about this. I got to get into the hospital. So I picked him up and I started going. Now this time the entire restaurant had come to a halt that no one was doing anything, all eyes were on us. People had come upstairs to see what happened, what was the commotion, and I'm, I've got my son and I'm going for the door and a doctor grabs me by the arm and says, stop, I'm a doctor, what are you doing? And I said, I'm taking my son to the hospital. He said, put him down. And he had such authority in his voice, I followed his instruction, I put him down. I was looking for a doctor, here's doctor. He said, you know, if you, if you don't know what happened, you might be making the injuries worse. You know, we'd, uh, and so I started hearing people talk about around me that he had fallen. And what I found out later is that he'd fallen 18 feet through a balcony onto a hardwood floor. And the whole time I'm trying to get his attention, that finally the paramedics show up and they start asking the same questions. Ryan, who, what's your name? Where are you? Do you know where you are? What day is it? Nothing. All his old answer the entire time was just a constant blood curdling scream. No one could satisfy it. We couldn't figure it out. So they put him on a stretcher. They took him in the ambulance. And the whole time I'm going to the, in, in the side of the ambulance, I hear all the, 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 them asking the same questions. What's your name? What day is it? How are, you know, what, what happened? And all he responded was with just screams, screams with his eyes rolled back. And I remember in that moment, I prayed. And I hadn't prayed in 
many, 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 many years. And I said, God, I, I, I don't know if you're even there. I don't know if you exist, but if you do, please hear me, whatever it takes. I just want my son to be okay. And it took 20 painstaking minutes to get to the hospital. And as we got there, we were met by the pediatric surgeon. And the pediatric surgeon came out, asked us all the same questions. We told him that he fell from a balcony. We didn't know what happened. We didn't know he just was unresponsive. And so he asked the same questions. What's your name? What day is it? Do you know where you are? And all he kept doing is yelling and screaming. And finally the surgeon asked, are you excited for Christmas? And he said, yes. And in that moment, I could breathe again. My son was going to come back to us. Because up until that moment, I didn't know what had happened. But now he at least had someone was in there. We could tell that he was there. And so we spent the Christmas in the hospital and he recovered. And it turned out that he had a ruptured spleen, a broken arm, but he bounced back and everything was gonna be okay. Now it took me a long time because my focus has been what a terrible father I was. How could I have not known? How could I have let my kids run around in a restaurant? I, I was even blaming the restaurant itself. How could you have a balcony that a kid can go through? How could they even get up there? There was no sign. But what I realized was that blame was just pinning me into this story of being a victim. And I was beating myself up and judging myself for being a terrible father. And it was only after I could acknowledge the truth of what happened and to forgive myself, to give forth the past and understand that I did the best I could with what I had. And that was my focus. And in that place, I could begin to be grateful for this experience. Why? I'm grateful because I never take one minute for granted with my children, my family, my friends. It gave me a new lease on life. And I'm reminded of, I'll close with this quote, a man once told Buddha, I want happiness. And Buddha replied, first remove I, that is ego. Then remove want, that is desire. And now all you're left with is happiness. I am grateful to be here with all of you today. Thank you for allowing me to share my story.